The caverns in this game are both extremely interesting and deeply scary. They lure naive fortress managers into their depths with promises of fertile soil, abundant resources, and an easy fortress setup, and then unleash untold numbers of strange monsters and procedurally generated weirdos on them to balance out the scales. Having had my fair share of cavern run-ins over the years, these days I usually just use the caverns to build farms and trap interesting creatures, both of which can be done safely behind stone walls and locked doors. But isolating a small section of moss from the chaos of the caverns is a very unambitious way to tackle the problems they pose, and doesn't exactly allow you to take full advantage of the benefits they offer. Which is why I recently spent a week building a cavern conquering fortress. The idea I had in my head when I embarked was that I could stop all the monsters and weirdos from entering my territory if I just built walls across all the borders each of my caverns had with off-screen territories. Creatures in this game don't just pop into existence wherever they feel like, they have to enter your territory from the edge of the map, so it seemed like I could conquer my caverns with just a couple walls. But before I could put my theory to the test, I had to embark to a reasonably sized 2x2 plot of generic looking shrubland, dig down and find all three caverns, establish a base camp in the most pleasant looking one, and spend a couple years welcoming migrants and building the strength of my squads. But once that was done, it was time for walls. Unfortunately for me, and anyone else trying to build a border, Many creatures are capable of climbing and or flying, rendering nice, easy to build single story walls completely useless. What I needed to build were walls that stretched from floor to ceiling and spanned the entirety of each border crossing, which doesn't sound too bad unless you've ever dealt with multi story walls in Dwarf Fortress before, then you know just how much micromanagement is involved. If you designate out all the walls at once, and trust your dwarves to figure out a logical order for them to be constructed, they'll screw it up. If you read the wiki page on walls, internalize the last in, first out mantra, and designate each wall one by one, finishing with the wall you want constructed first, they'll still screw it up. And so, as far as I can tell, the best method to guarantee leak-proof multi-story walls is just to take it slow and build new walls only when they won't block off access to other walls in need of construction. This was the slow and steady technique we used in our first wall, and then we just kept using it all across caverns 2 and 3. With how much time we were taking per wall, and how vulnerable my dwarves were out in the open, it seemed like it would only be a matter of time before I lost some dwarves to an animal person ambush or a forgotten beast blitz. But it seemed that we had luck on our side, because the animal people never noticed what we were up to, and each forgotten beast that paid us a visit decided to enter our territory through one of the borders we had already blocked. By the time we had finished up in Cavern 3, three of our walls had been put to the test by would-be invaders and had passed with flying colors. With Uthgur the Marmot, Orgu the Quadruped, and Omo the Flea stuck in the demilitarized zones between my borders and the outside world. By following my plan, we had effectively conquered caverns 2 and 3, and could now do whatever we wanted in them. But what I wanted was to finish what I had started by controlling cavern 1 as well, and that was a whole different beast. Cavern 1 had some active forgotten beasts in it that we needed to fight, some large borders we needed to wall off, and a large subterranean lake that we needed to do something about. At first I wasn't sure if the water was much of a problem, I had never really paid attention to water borders and caverns before, and so I'd never seen a creature cross into my territory by swimming. But after we had walled off all the land borders in Cavern 1, I spotted a giant ulm worming its way through the water and up onto my territory. I couldn't exactly claim to have conquered Cavern 1 if any creature capable of doggy paddling could launch an amphibious invasion and so I gathered my dwarves and got them to start flowing over all the water to create one last border. A couple hours and a couple hundred trees later, Cavern 1 was secured, bringing all three caverns under the dominion of my dwarves. With the threat of forgotten beasts and other creatures gone, I was now free to take advantage of the resources and easy expansion that the caverns offered without fear. 
and my dwarves were free to wander around, automatically collecting webs to their heart's content. So this is why you should conquer your caverns. You'll have all the space in the world without having to dig, with all the resources you could want without having to farm or search, and you get to laugh at all the monsters building up and fighting with one another behind your walls. What could be better than that? Thanks for watching, an extra thank you to those of you who support me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.